We are 22S Radio. 22S Radio is 22SMedia.com and 88.1 FM KKJZ HD3, Long Beach, Los Angeles. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, and now our world broadcasting tag team champions of the world and our cruiserweight champion. I'm Ethan. I'm James. I'm Rob. And this is... Uh, the 150th episode of oh, really? Beyond the Ropes. We are BTR Pro Wrestling Talk. And boys, it's going to be a too sweet episode. Uh, because as we're recording this, it is the 25th anniversary of the New World Order formation. Uh, yeah. 25 years ago today, the group known as the NWO, starring uh, Hollywood Hulk Hogan, Big Sexy Kevin Ash, and Scott Hall himself uh, formed at Bash at the Beach in 1996. Um, kind of like, I mean, it was what two years ago now that James joined joined the show and became the third man. Well, you know, it's only been two years. It's been yeah, it's only been two years, but it, it feels like forever ago. Um, so yes, it's it's been 25 years today. We're as we're recording it. As uh, the NWO mm. has been formed, we'll talk a little bit more about how you know that happened and everything that led up to it, and afterwards, uh, the legacy it's left for sure. Of course, you can follow us on social media. You can follow us on Twitter at RealBTR Radio. You can follow myself at Ethan ninety five. You can follow James at at JHW Reporter. You can follow Rob at. Rob Flores Media, and don't forget the R2 DMs for Ethan. And you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Beyond the Ropes, as well as YouTube to search up Beyond the Ropes. And uh, I believe we're caught up, almost caught up on every episode uploaded. Rob, I know you posted a few this past week, so I think we're getting there if we're not already there. Anyways, of course, we're all rocking our black and white here colors. And uh, hey, this episode actually makes sense. There, we're in black and white. We've always been in black and white, so we're going to continue that. Um, something that's not in black and white, that's a uh, shame. I couldn't think of a good transition there. Yeah, um, I was like, hey, man, where's it going with know. this? But no, uh, Jim Uso is in the news once again. Oh, Jim. Not, not good news. Uh, so this comes from TMZ, our, our trusted source this week. Um, comes from TMZ. Uh, this was, uh, I believe, Monday. Monday morning, we found this out. Uh, so this is from TMZ. WWE star Jimmy Uso has been arrested for DUI again. After cop says, say he was driving in Florida with a BAC, blood alcohol, I believe, level or blood alcohol concentration of... Okay. 0.205. And yes, there is a 205 live joke. Yeah, and the 205. The two, the the two hundred five jokes were flying, and at first I was like, "Oh, why are they saying that?" And then I saw he actually hit a two hundred five, and I was like, oh. "And that's not good by any means. That's that's you no. know, I'm not good at, that's not. I'm not good at math, but yeah." According to uh, I'll continue. According to police talks, uh, Uso's real name Jonathan Fatu was pulled over at around 10.35 p.m. on Monday in Pensacola after cops said he ran a red light after being clocked going 50 miles per hour in a 35 mile uh, per, mile per hour uh, zone. Mm-hmm. In the doc, documents, officers say uh, during subsequent questioning, they smelled booze on the 35-year-old, so they asked him to exit his Dodge Charger. Uh, cops say when Uso got out of the got out of the vehicle, he was noticeably swaying and claimed that Uso had told him that he had consumed multiple beers before getting behind the wheel. Uh, officers say Uso went on to bomb the field sobriety test, so they arrested him in the documents. Cops claim Uso's BAC breath tests came back at 0.202 and 0.205, well above Florida's legal limit of 0.08. So that's well yeah. above that legal limit there. 
Uh, according to jail records, Uso was booked on a misdemeanor uh, DUI charge, and he's currently still behind uh, bars. This was as of Tuesday, um, Tuesday morning, I believe. Police documents show that Uso was also hit with citations for speeding and running a red light. His bond is currently set at $500. Jail records show this is the second time in the last two years that Uso has been accused of drunk driving. He's booked for DUI in Pensacola back in July of 2019. Uh, but a jury later found Uso not guilty in the case, despite police video that appeared to be showing Uso swerving and stumbling during his arrest. Uh, Uso was also re- arrested earlier in 2019 when he allegedly got into a drinking dispute with cops in Detroit. Um, so yeah, so this is the third time in two years that Uso has had some trouble with the law and <clears throat> that's not good. I mean, one time is bad enough, but two, three times in two years is especially mm-hmm. bad. Yeah. So you, it you is said, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, sorry. Rob, it, it is, uh, it is the Jimmy Uso that just returned uh, a number of weeks ago from injury. Mm-hmm. Um, so just to clarify again, he he's had four total, right? This is just three and however many years you said, though. I, I want to say four. I believe I have heard four. This is yeah. three the last few years. I don't remember the first one, but yes, I believe I, so, I have four. So depending on how WWE looks at them, um, I mean, four is four. But I believe they, I believe they do a three strike rule. Um, they're probably a little flexible with that because the the only reason why well, I'm bringing this up is because I remember Randy Orton. Um, and, and I guess I mean getting arrested, getting arrested. I think whatever Orton's deal was, I think his were some sort of um, was it drug? I don't know if it was really drug related. I want to say, I want to say, um, there were, there were failed drug tests. Um, were they? So, Uso did not fail any drug tests that I'm aware of. So that's part of it. Cause Jeff Hardy also, I believe Rob mentioned it. If Jeff has done worse, uh, yes, he's also had a number of issues with abuse, mm-hmm. alcohol and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, but I believe WWE's response has always been, you know, that they the wrestler is responsible for their own actions. So as yeah. long as, you know, they haven't done anything, you know, insane. You know, they tend to just kind of let the wrestler handle the, the situation. Well, y- yes, they do. But then at the same time, I mean, that doesn't mean that, the, you know, they, I mean, they could, there's, they could still take him off TV. They could still end the storyline. They could still not have, you know, I mean, if he, goes, he can go to rehab and then he's just not on TV. You know what I mean? So, Absolutely. huh? Absolutely. Yeah, so, I mean, it's like, it's not that, I mean, you, whether they counted the strike or whatever, but I think that it also goes, so here's, so here's a few other things that came to mind for me. Uh, again, just to clarify, he's the one who's married to Naomi, correct? Correct. So, I mean, I'm not blaming Naomi by any means, but I'm just curious, like, what, like, what is going on, like, what... What needs to be done? Like, what, what's going on? I mean, I haven't seen, like, them when they've done the show or anything. I mean, I'm assuming they have a great relationship. But uh, are they on the same show? I'm just trying to think, like, why is it? Right, right now, they're not on the same show. They're right? not on the same show. Okay. Rough. Because I'm, I'm just trying. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying Naomi needs to be his babysitter. I'm not, not saying that at all. But I just think, you know, uh, something kind of needs. I don't want to say. Because of because Naomi, something needs to be done. I mean, his father's Rikishi. I mean, there there's there's plenty of reasons why Jimmy shouldn't be in this situation, but he is. So it is what it is, I guess. But I think it's also worth mentioning again that this is happening in Florida. This is happening after July Fourth weekend. I just feel like there's there should be too many other wrestlers. Like they should all kind of be together. Um, I would think to where something like that's not happening. I mean, it, it just leaves me curious. This you know, I mean, this, go ahead. Tonight. this was after already July 4th, this Monday night. Right. So. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It was on his own. I mean, my thing is there's Uber, there's Lyft, there's a taxi, there's he could have called someone to drive. I don't well, know if he's still driving, getting behind the wheel. Well, that's why it goes to the what I'm saying is just like 
I, I mean, what what was he doing? Like, where was you know what I mean? I just, I mean, oh it, yeah, you're right. Well, I don't know. It's just, it's just kind of like, is he hanging out at the bar? And if so, is he hanging out at the bar alone? Like, like did was there someone else with him who could have you know told him? Like, th- that's that's just kind of some of the things that come to mind for me. Again, Jimmy's responsible for his own actions. So whatever I'm saying here, I don't want it to get misunderstood as I'm as I'm putting blame on others and saying, oh poor Jimmy. No, the, it's on Jimmy. But I just think, you know, whether it's, you know, with Naomi or with Jay or even, I mean, with Roman or, you know, Rake- does Rikishi need to be in his ear even more? Like, like what needs to be done? Uh, this, this is a family that, you know, I, I feel they're as close as they can, they can be. And for it to have happened three other times prior to this, like what more needs to be done before Jimmy goes down a path? Uh, one that he already appears to be going down, but what could be done to kind of help this situation uh, from getting any worse than it already is? Because uh, to have that high of a, of a, of a, you know, of a number and the legal limit is 0.08 and you're hitting 0.2. I mean, I don't know. I, I just feel like there should be something done to help Jimmy. I mean, he, he was injured. He went through all that stuff. You know, it, well, what more needs to be done? Where is he at mentally to to try and ha- help himself overcome this hurdle? Absolutely. Um, so speaking of returning, you know, big returns, he did have a return. Let's go back to SmackDown, um, where he did he did uh, recently, prior to the arrest, uh, get taken down by the Raider or Superstar Edge. Um, as if kind of had a, a repeat of what happened in WrestleMania between Edge and Roman. Mm-hmm. Um, but another big return was Zelina Vega. She is back with the company after being uh, released back in November. Uh, rumors speculated, I believe, as early as March that yeah. she was either seen at the Performance Center or potentially in talks with going back. Um, and some of this was even before Alistair got released. Uh, yeah, it definitely uh, it was. So it, it's just it's crazy just how the WWE works sometimes, though, right? Because it's kind of like you almost thought Selena Vega was in a spot where there was no chance whatsoever, at least any time in the near future, that she would be coming back. Let alone was it? I don't I don't know if it was the same year. I think maybe she got cut twenty twenty, right? Um, or she let whatever they parted ways, whatever. But with the whole thing with Twitch and all that, you just thought she was. You just kind of thought it was. It, it just wasn't going to happen anytime soon. And for her to come back as fast as she was, funny enough, I think she was streaming on Twitch when it happened. Because yeah, I saw so- she was live. Wait, this was on Friday, right? Yeah. So, so it was probably filmed or aired on Tuesday. It was probably recorded on Tuesday or whatever. Um, I think I don't know, um, but yeah, I think she was streaming. I meant to watch the stream because I would was curious to know if she was there, like, or was she just at home chilling? Was Alistair there? Like, you know, well, I mean, there was supposed to be talk too of maybe Alistair even coming back, right? I mean, I think I heard that was a thing, or they want him back, or something along those lines. So, yeah, so we had heard going back to Selena, we had heard um, she walked in the performance center with the Rock's daughter Simone um to do something um so that was in what april may maybe even in march yeah um again there had been talk that she had potentially worked out something with wwe um and then yeah she showed up friday night smackdown she's officially added into the money in the bank ladder match right away apparently so i don't have details in front of me i couldn't find anything um right now but i remember seeing that apparently a number of officials did want her back felt she had a huge upside um they uh, apparently apologized to her um which is interesting uh for her release her release was mainly due to the fact that she did not want to give up her twitch but not only that apparently it was the only fans that i think drove it over the edge uh which only fans, have one of them? yeah only fans is a uh, an adult primarily an adult content Primary, yeah. mm-hmm. um she was just doing like cosplay stuff there i don't think yeah. she was doing anything you know excessive or anything 
And I think Paige has one too, or was on there, or there was something with Paige too. I thought Paige was kind of more behind that one than anything. I don't, I don't know. Don't, I don't know what Paige is doing at the moment. I know yeah. she's still Twitch. Uh, yeah, she's still on Twitch too. But um, no, Zelina, I know. Uh, she's been on Twitch. Uh, I think she dyed her hair. She did dye her, her hair recently as well. Um, but no, she, they brought her back. It's nice to see that she's back with the company. Um, I know Alistair, speaking of Alistair, he's been doing more and more Twitch on Twitch, on her Twitch recently. So I'm sure he's probably taking over more. I don't know what the deal is, whether she's still going to be able to tw- be on Twitch. Because as far as I know, that's not in the contract. That's, you know, well, and, that no one else is able to Twitch right now. So, And, like, and yeah. that was the whole, that was so for me, like, again, that was kind of the whole thing is like there, it was such a big deal. It was part of why she left or whatever. It was part of why there were so many people upset and some people weren't willing to give up the access the way others were when it came to the third party stuff. But it's like, as if like now none of it ever happened. Like, I mean, no one's mentioned it. There was never resolved. There was never an announcement. Maybe there doesn't need to be an announcement. Um, but I don't know. And then again, though, too, and I know we're running up against a commercial here in a minute, but I guess I'll leave you with this. For as many people as we're releasing, we're bringing some people back, though, too. I don't know. I, it's just funny. But one more thing, one more thing is, again, sorry. Um, I guess maybe they don't have to worry about Vega doing the only, not the only fans, but doing the Twitch because maybe Alistair will just kind of take it over and then kind of keep it going and, you know, make all the subscribers that are on Twitch and all that happy while Selena does her thing on that. But again, like I said, she was on there. Um, but I'll be curious to see where she go if she's been on it. I don't, I'm trying to remember. But again, just how she's going to be on it while she has a WWE contract. So, yeah, it's a wait and see process um, quickly with Alistair Black. Uh, he did post a video as we're recording this early today. Uh, very cinematic, very well done. I believe Josiah Williams was actually in it uh, as well. Um, go watch it. It's, it's on his Instagram, Tommy End. Um, and he goes by a different name. He says, don't call me Tommy. Uh, my name is Malachi. Um, and in the credits, they go by, he goes by Malachi Blacks. Um, so it looks like he might be a new ring name he might not be coming back to wwe after all because it's actually a pretty yeah. cool video as well uh but when and we, we had back, a malachi already right oh that was mordecai never mind yeah that was a different different guy but when we return we're gonna be talking about the old school black and white ladies and gentlemen as well as some great american bash on this very wcw themed episode of beyond the ropes we are 22s radio 22s radio is 22s media.com and 88.1 FM at KKJZ HD3, Long Beach, Los Angeles. Pack. I was like, what? <laughs> uh, We're episode, being taken over. Episode 150 of Beyond the Ropes. Of course, I'm your host, Ethan. Join alongside the analyst, James Williams, and producer, Rob Flores. And yes, the following announcement has been paid for the New World Order. Uh, the NWO. 25th anniversary today as we're recording this uh, a huge milestone um for wrestling i know you wanted to start off with the game so if you want yes. to start with the game pad and then we'll talk a little history uh afterwards so we're gonna we're gonna play a little game i'm not gonna pretend like i made it up myself this was something stone cold steve austin did he's either had or is supposed to be having kevin nash on the podcast on, on the broken skull show um on the peacock app sometime soon if it's not already out anyways go check it out i'm sure it's gonna be great i know i'll be watching that for sure anyways there they did a little fun game on twitter and i felt like it would be awesome to do here on the show so ethan i'm gonna give you 30 seconds oh, Lord. And, you're gonna, and you're gonna name as many nwo members as you can are okay. you ready oh god are you ready uh, yes okay ready set go hulk hogan kevin ash scott hall Shawn Michaels, Booker T, Six, Ted DiBiase, uh, oh my God, Bur- Virgil wasn't his name there, but he was in it, uh, Stevie Ray, uh, Scott Norton, um, 10 seconds left, Red Hart, Jeff Jarrett, Scott Steiner, uh, The Giant, uh, Time. 
Okay, so Vincent, that's right. There's Rob Vincent. So the John Michaels one was kind of right now, whatever. I guess. I guess. Sir, John Michaels was a good leader. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I guess. So I came in the Hall of Fame with the NWO. Come on. <laughs> you didn't put him in with the NWO. They should. No, <laughs> stop it. So I'm not going to count the Shawn Michaels one. Oh, boo. Because it will just for, for consistency, because if you get the rest, it's all WCW guys, right? Booker T let's just, wasn't. Let's, I Booker. He was in WWE's version. He was in – okay, I mean, you're just taking points off your own damn self at this point. Sir, those are NWO. <laughs> okay, we'll keep, we'll keep, we'll keep, we'll keep, we'll keep, we'll keep Booker T and HBK. So let me count up your total here. You got 1, 2, 3, 4, 14. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. How do you know? I counted. I was counting with my hands. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, yeah, you had 14. Um. I think some notable ones you missed. I don't even know if he said Luger and Sting. I, I don't know any Wolfpack names. I blanked. I don't think he said ba- uh, Bagwell. I don't know if you said Conan, Mr. Mr. Perfect. Perfect, Macho um, Man. I don't think I mentioned Macho Man. You could have said Macho Man, Rick Rude, Miss Elizabeth. Um, I mentioned Dusty. Dusty in there. You got. Uh, did you say Dusty? You could have said Dusty. I did. Say um, that. you um, didn't say Eric Bischoff. No. Uh, you can say Horace Hogan, the nerve of you. That's right, the hor- the legendary horse, the legendary Horace Hogan, the um, nerve of you. Um, Bubba, wasn't Bubba in there? Big AKA Bubba Rogers might have been in there for a hot minute. Boss I think he might have been the first one out too. Boss man, really? <laughs> I think so. I mean, I don't remember being in there very long. I'm trying to remember who the first person kicked out was. No, actually, I think it was Ted. Ted was, was the boss. second. Was like the. I think Ted was the fourth or fifth member, and I think he was the first one out. Yeah, he was like the fifth member because I think Giant was four, and then he was fifth. Then no, it was six. Six was six. six or was, was he seven? <laughs> or so. I don't know. There's some questionable stuff in there because I don't know because he's either six or seven. His name is six, but well, <laughs> his name is six because the one two three kid. That's how I. Was. That's, that's why. But yeah, they also say like. He, he might have been, but I think I did hear he was like the sixth member too, or but it was. I, I want to say Conan. I didn't four. mention Conan. We'll pack in there. Um, yeah, Conan. I said Conan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think Ted was four. Um, Ted was four, I believe. No, Ted, fifth. It was Ted or the Giant. I think it was Ted, though. I think it was Ted. I, I should really Ted. pull up all the members here. Uh, yes, Conan was on a W television recently. Well. Oh, wait, what? What was he doing? He just cut a promo and then got beat up. By, uh, by who? He oh. did a promo for the uh, Inner Circle. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, he, yeah that was all right. Um, um, let me look up NWO members here. Yeah, let's do that. I'm trying to think of, you had like, what, what I think the great Muda, whoever the guy, he used to spit the green stuff. Yeah, Muda was Muda works in the NWO, yeah. You didn't say Stevie Ray, you mentioned Booker, but I don't think you said Stevie. Oh, look at this. I've got all these names here. All right. It's probably like 100 names. There's a timeline that will uh, say the length of all Ooh. these. Ooh. Tell me uh, that one when you get a moment. Don't do it now. I'll send it later. It's on Wikipedia. I'll send it to you guys. Um, okay. Uh, but let's go with a little history first first off okay before we get into the members uh it started off as we mentioned earlier at bash at the beach beach 1996 uh when um actually a few weeks prior when scott hall showed up as uh formerly known as uh razor ramon Mm -hmm. after he defected from wwf i said you know who i am but you don't know why i'm here the legendary line on the you know, gets brought up from time to time. Uh, the following week, he showed up with his his friend, his buddy, Kevin Nash, as they interrupted Eric Bischoff. Um, and then I believe they showed up at the Great American Bash, which we'll talk about, NXT's Great American Bash shortly, um, as well mm-hmm. as, um, so they, I believe they power, he powerbombed Bischoff up the stage at that bash, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then that bash at the beach is yep. when Hogan, they had announced a third man. They were going to do a six-man tag against, uh, was it Luger, Sting, and Macho Man? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then Hogan uh, came out to the ring, 
to make the save after the outsiders Hall and Nash were, you know, dominating there. Wasn't one like Luger hurt or something? One of them was uh, hurt really bad. And they took him out or something early on. Um, yeah, that sounds about right. Because Sting was still there, and then obviously Macho Man was the one that got I in. saw the clip today. Yeah, Macho yeah. was the one who... No, I think Luger, Luger was taken out. Hogan came out to make the save. Then we get mm-hmm. to see the leg drop on Macho Man officially initiating the NWO. Um, and that led to, you know, the next, what, two, at least two or three years of solid NWO stuff. Solid NWO, maybe depending, two years. Depending on so there's certain, some solid, not so solid. Uh, but we got to see members such as uh, Dennis Rodman. Then anyway, I could have said Rodman. He was in there. He was in there. He missed, uh, missed practice, didn't he, for the NWO? <laughs> yeah, he meant like during the NBA Finals, too. Like right now, <laughs> the NBA Finals are going on. And, and instead Did of showing up to practice, Dennis Rodman is going to going to WCW. Nitro, but they still won, right? Didn't they still win the... I'm pretty the sure they still won, yeah. He was with uh, the Bulls then. So uh, Michael Jordan was on the... Yeah. I guess Michael Jordan was still. I don't know how they would have how he would have let that happen. Uh, oh, it's Rodman. I don't know, but uh, I anyway. mean that's Michael Jordan. You know, yeah, I, I just I know. Uh, I just remember them exiting a limo. I've mm-hmm. seen. Them play. I was, I was one years old. I mean, no, I was like eight months old when they formed. Sure. So I don't remember. I wasn't there live, uh, but I watched you know clips over the years, and I just remember watching. Rodman and several members of the NWO exiting the limo and making their entrance. They spent like wait five minutes you were, making an entrance. You were eight months old when the Rodman stuff happened. Uh, when the Hogan stuff. Sorry. Well, when the NWO stuff. When they. First- I was gonna say because I remember the Rodman stuff. I mean, it's not. It's not like it was that much farther along. I, I remember three, like Rodman being and a half, two years old. <laughs> okay, because I remember Rodman on my TV. I, I was probably like five. I guess. Oh. I mean, I remember. Like, yeah, you're a couple of years older than me, so I was mm-hmm. probably two or three. Um, but yeah, just that, that long entrance that they would make. Obviously, the spray paint is famous. Um, you remember the Kevin Nash throwing Rey Mysterio in like a dart, um, and they actually had the cops called on them um, because people thought it was legit. Um, and then you had, of course, spray paint to the title, the world title, the WCW title. I believe there's a Wolfpack version right now on WWShop.com for like 500 bucks. That looks really cool. Um, yeah, it's a nice replica. Um, but then, um, then what? I think there was some power issue. Um, well, they had a bunch of members join from the Giants to Macho Man to... To uh, everybody on the locker who wasn't... <laughs> Dustin, well, I Miller guess you could say around. Luger and Sting that were a part of it. Then they eventually split. Kevin Nash kind of went his own way, kind of turning face, right? And then led the yeah. Wolfpack. It was kind of a face side. I don't even really remember how it happened. I just kind of remember it happened. Right, and that's when Sting... Like, I don't know why they split. That's when Sting turned. He never turned on the NWO. Never, never joined the NWO, and then he joined the Wolfpack with Luger and Conan. They were kind of the core NWO Wolfpack. And Macho Man. Why do you keep snubbing the Macho Man today? Was Macho Man Wolfpack? Yes. Really? Yeah. He joined, he joined after, though. Like, after they I, were... I don't know when he joined. I, I would think, if anything, he was on early on. Because, to me, that's kind of like almost the outcast of people. It's pretty much everyone who was against nwo who joined right. um kevin nash is as if kevin nash got kicked out but i don't even really remember kevin nash getting kicked out i yeah. just remember it was almost like a power struggle if anything one day we're gonna have to go back and watch the next we will show. we will have to we do that so um anyways they eventually got back together the finger po- finger legendary finger poke of doom which you know wasn't very well received but they joined and what it became nwo uh, elite, or at least a core group was elite, NWO elite. I don't remember that. I think they, I think they had like a the B team, or whatever. They had a B team locker room and stuff. Um, <laughs> and then later on, yeah, I think. Well, a lot of that too. Stuff. Remember is is there? It was the intentions of not of NWO not being a gang, but essentially 
being a secondary brand. They wanted a secondary brand. They wanted mm-hmm. their own show. They got the pay-per-view sold out, uh, yeah. which they all lost, ended up losing, I believe, uh, all the NWO. Yeah, yeah. Did. yeah they did. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so eventually, they, you know, it, they were trying to make it their its own brand. It didn't happen. Kind of disbanded. Then we get to NWO 2000 um, with Jeff Jarrett, Kevin Nash, Scott Steiner and your favorite Bret Hart. Um, I don't even remember how that ended. It, it didn't last very long, I don't think. Um, Probably just fizzled out. I don't know. Fizzled out. Um, and then we get to WWE and we get the reformation of the original tri- tri- trio. Didn't last too long either. Xbox kind of took over Hogan's role. Scott Hall was having some issues. Um, and eventually Shawn Michaels came in, took over with Kevin Nash. Uh, brought in Big Show and Booker T and I mean we go several years later and then we get NWO into the WWE Hall of Fame earlier this year um, with the original three as well as six so that's kind of the NWO timeline um, so pretty much stuff? every everyone on the WCW roster who wasn't the Ultimo Dragon and Rey Mysterio were on the NWO <laughs> Well, Rey Mysterio, <laughs> in front of, okay, okay, and Alex Wright and Glacier, right? But Rey, Rey Mysterio was in the LWO, wasn't he? Anyway, probably. So I think yeah. Diamond Dallas Page was the only person never to. Diamond Dallas Page and Goldberg were the only two people I think that never defected. That's correct. That would would be correct. Especially if you're talking about the biggest stars, yes, those are the biggest two who didn't. Yeah, so um, that's kind of NWO and history in a nutshell. I know we skipped over a bunch of stuff. But um, yeah, we get we just had to mention uh, it them on their twenty fifth anniversary. Uh, there's a reason why we do have black and white filters over each episode of Beyond the Ropes. Uh, there's a reason why a couple of years ago we we named James the Third Man, he became the Hogan of the group, mm-hmm. um, whether he likes it or not. Uh, yeah, <laughs> put it that way. But that's fine. <laughs> Makes me feel like the most important one. I'll take it. Well, let's face it. I'm the Kevin Nash of the group. I'm eventually going to lead my own wolf pack once you guys snub me or something. You guys, yeah, but I made the most money, though. Sir, I'm still. The I'm wolf telling pack. you. I'm telling you. You don't get paid to do the show. Wait, we're, we're supposed. To I get say. I mean, I I signed the contract. Well, I, don't about, know about you. I need to talk to you. I need. We need to talk after the show. Um, I didn't know you're doing the show for free. Apparently, I am. So, yeah. anyways. Um, <laughs> let's, let's move on to something more recent. It is officially announced that WWE Friday Night SmackDown will be playing. We'll play. That's fine. It says we'll play. They'll perform at Rolling, Rolling Loud Miami 2021 Festival on July 23rd. The occasion marks the first ever collaboration between WWE and a major music festival, which is not true because technically they were a download fest in England. Uh, at what? Download fest. It's a metal festival. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> taking the stage, taking the same stage as festival headliners Travis Scott, Post Malone, ASAP Rocky, WWE superstars will compete live matches uh, from Rolling Loud Miami. The twenty, uh, let's see, it'll be a split site broadcast. Multiple matches at Miami, with the remainder of the event being held in Cleveland. Um. Yeah, already some negative reactions from fans that have paid tickets, you know, for the Cleveland event. Um, I hope they get their money's worth, even though the entire episode is, you know, not going to be filmed there. Hopefully, you know, we talked about it. Maybe they'll get some dark matches or something. Um, but yeah, this is a huge deal. Again, Deadline reported this as I'm reading this. I mean, a number of sites have, but um, they did say this is the first time. Typically, it's not the first time WWE is at a festival. But um, it is a pretty big festival. I know it is for, I guess, it's hip-hop, right? Yeah, yeah it's hip-hop. <laughs> um, so what, I, what I'm doing, if you guys are looking at the YouTube videos, I'm looking at the lineup because I've seen some jokes made about it, and it kind of came to mind, but I'm, I don't see it on here. But I need to know if Soldier Boy is on this lineup because there's a main event there that needs to happen. It's just waiting. Randy Orton, Soldier Boy, book it. Sir, Make it happen. I just want to see the Kid Leroy on SmackDown. Is Bow Wow on here? 
skip I Bow Wow. Bow Wow wants a team with Rey Mysterio. Oh God. Do a trip. Do a trip. Do a, a six man tag. Let's get Jack in there. He called himself the Cactus Jack earlier this year. With put him in there with Mick Foley. Let it. Let it. Let it there you go. Hey, Foley, we're gonna get let's, there, There's some potential here, and and you know Wale is a fan. Wale can get in there with somebody too. Just saying. Wale will sing Biggie's entrance music. There you go. Something. Absolutely. So when we return, we'll finally get to the Great American Bash. Um, Very uh, upsetting. We'll, we'll mention it. We'll mention it now. Um, unfortunately, we got some sad news earlier this yeah. week uh, regarding Terry Funk. Yeah. Uh, Terry Funk has been, you know, announced has been dealing with dementia. Obviously, a very serious uh, disease, I guess. Um, uh, WWE and a number of wrestling superstars have been sending their thoughts. Um, he's what eighty years old, seventy something years old. I think so, and I think there was a statement put out. I don't know if, if this is his official account. Uh, I'm assuming this is his account, his main account, the Dirty Funker. I don't know. Anyways, he said yes. Mr. Funk is currently receiving a uh, break. Go to break. Yeah. So so. You're going to read that when we return, but when we yeah, return, yeah, yeah. about that well, it's Great American Bash right here on Beyond the Ropes. We are 22S Radio. 22S Radio is 22SMedia.com and 88.1 FM KKJZ HD3 on Beach, Los Angeles. Welcome back to episode 150 of uh, Beyond the Ropes. We are BTR Pro Wrestling Talk. Uh, unfortunately, when, when we uh, just got off the air, um, Very commercial. We were about we were commercial. We were talking about Terry Funk uh, being diagnosed with dementia, I've been dealing with it. Uh, James, I believe you have a statement. Yeah. Um, so this is from The Dirty Funker. Um, it's not a verified account, which I would think it would, but it seems to be the main source for all things Terry Funk, the official account. Um, the statement reads, yes, Mr. Funk is currently receiving residential care for his multiple health issues, which do affect his mind as well as the rest of his body. As you can imagine, some days are better than others. He and his family appreciate all of your kind words forever. Uh, absolutely. Sending our thoughts and well wishes to um, Terry Funk and his family. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, there was also another unfortunate news. Uh, the Patriot yep. uh, passed away earlier this week. I'm not too familiar with... Uh, Patriot. I know he, I've heard of him. I know he had mm -hmm. Kurt Angle's music, right? Uh, before Kurt Angle. So. Yeah, I believe so. And it's funny that you mentioned that because so the one thing if I remember correctly, or maybe this was just me with action figures, uh, the Patriot was a heel. No, he was actually, uh, he was a baby face, but uh, I do remember him. I think they did what, shoot an angle there or work an angle between him and Bret Hart, where it was almost Canada versus America. Um, the reason why the Patriot sticks out to me as someone that I'm, I remember from, I guess it was that, yeah, it was the Attitude Era, um, is we had his action figure, and that was one of the ones that my brother would use quite a bit. Um, I feel like Patriot probably wasn't there that long, but within wrestling circles, I think he has been around for some time. I think he was even in WCW at one point. Um, but yeah, I believe he did have Kurt Angle's mask. And I think at one time, maybe when we put that two and two together, or we kind of uh, looked at Kurt Angle's gimmick, we maybe thought, wait, was Kurt Angle the Patriot? And maybe this is just him unmasked now. So we thought maybe that was his situation. But um, yeah, Dan Wilkes, I believe is the name of the Patriot. Um, that's his, his real name. And uh, I remember uh, he was on Stone Cold's podcast many years ago now. And he said he was taking several, uh, like a, a good number of like pills, like an unhealthy amount. Like, I mean, like, we're not just talking about unhealthy, like an unhealthy amount. Um, and I think he's, he actually was turning things around and, and was clean um, for the final couple of years of his life here. So I'm not sure. I don't think I heard what the situation was there, but I would imagine maybe some of that stuff kind of took its toll on him and uh, maybe played into his uh, untimely death. Um, yeah, so wish best uh, our thoughts and wishes to his family and friends. Mm -hmm. uh, breaking news. <laughs> uh, 
as I just went on social media. Yeah. The artist formerly known as Alistair Black, mm-hmm. now known as Malachi Black, just showed up on AEW Dynamite and hit a black mass on Arn Anderson and Cody Rhodes. <laughs> um, yeah, so... That answered that question. So I guess okay. he's all elite. Oh, he's all elite. Um, yeah, he does have a black eye. So he's continuing with that eye gimmick that he had in WWE where he lost his eye, which is I love the long-term storytelling. Um, but I mean, I don't know how he can do how he can do that. Or did or did he say he came up with that story? I, yeah, then wasn't that part of it that they let him do his own thing? Possibly. It's not his eyes missing, it's just he's wearing a contact and like the eye around is like black, whatever. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, so he he just made his AW deep debut as we were recording this. Um, yeah, Zelina did a tweet about it. You know, where she tweeted, she was, she was proud of him. Um, that's about it. Obviously, she is with WWE, and it seems like Alistair, well, now Malachi Black, who is going by, um, has chosen to sign with AEW. I didn't realize he was able to go already. He just that's right. That's why I'm he just got released that. like a month ago. Yeah, it was kind oh. of fast how it happened. I think, <clears throat> but I think I might have heard of that before. I think I didn't. I, I don't know if we talked about that or maybe that was. I mean, I brought it. They let. But I think it. I, I no. Well, well, because I think it was like some of those guys who wanted to be released or whatever. It would just kind of like release them, and then free them of the days. But I don't think too they would. I don't think do Alistair that. wanted to be released. He said he was shocked when he got released. Um, so I don't think there's. Uh-huh. There's no way you were shocked you got released. I mean, maybe the time, yeah, but Alistair Black, he had just debuted. We did. I knew. I mean, I wasn't surprised he got released. I was surprised that he got released when he did, they were just starting a storyline for him. But I wasn't surprised he got released. I, I mean, that I came as a, that came to a, as a shock to you. It did. It came to a shock to a lot of people. <laughs> no, I wasn't shocked at all. That that and the Lana one did not shock me at all. Well, it, it his AEW debut shocked me. Um, oh, the AEW thing shocked me because of how quick it is. And one, I'm surprised he, if he's still going on with any sort of gimmick familiar to some from WWE. That's interesting. Two, he kept the last name Black. That's interesting. Um, three, I think, what'd you say? He hit the same finisher. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. And then the wife, then his wife, Selena Vega, comes back on WWE. Maybe they knew Alistair was headed that way and and uh, kind of keep him from both going. Maybe... I don't know. We, we we talked about it earlier that they kind of were planning on bringing her in anyways, right? So, yeah, they may have wanted Black back, but apparently that's not the case anymore because um, he obviously signed elsewhere. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what he does. Um, yeah, because what is, I mean, AEW just, I mean, you, can you almost call Alistair Black a D- WWE guy? He's been there for like five years. So, yeah. I mean, Here's the thing. AEW. What's your favorite Alistair Black match? He had one. I mean, with Andrade, it was really good. They're probably going to have a few. They're probably going to have a thing, yeah. Um, That was really good. Honestly, that was probably the best one uh, when he won the NXT title. Uh, then he had one with Dream. The one, 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 one Dream one was really good. Yeah. Was really good. Um, All right. I was just seeing if you knew any matches. Carry on. Oh, his NXT one was great. Um, it was fantastic, but... Yeah, I mean, I'm interested to see what he's going to do in AEW. Eventually, mm-hmm. AEW is going to have to cut some talent because there's no way they're – I don't know how they're paying all these people money, um, especially yeah. on the road for a year almost, or more than a year actually. So they're going to have to make some cuts, and I don't know. If they're planning on hiring more recently released uh, WWE superstars, I don't know mm-hmm. how they're going to manage to uh, pay these people. Yeah, I mean, I think they'll probably start releasing people, especially if more come available. Again, though, I said this before, you're getting very WCW-like here yes. when when yes. you're bringing in these people. But to their credit, some of the people that they've been bringing in have been people for the broadcasting, right? So Mark Henry, a big show. Those are fine. I it's get it. Cool. But when you get some guys in the ring that are like, oh, yeah, he was on the other show. It's still very treading WCW territory. I mean, it is. It's on the same channel. It has the same guy, like the plate, like the shot. Very similar to WCW. Uh, 
it's shot very similarly to WCW. Yeah, anyway. I mean, you, you got Bischoff there. Yeah, Shabar, you know, Ronnie. Not full time, but yeah, it's getting close. All right. Speaking of WCW, let's talk about the Great American Bash finally. Mm. Uh, NXT had a fantastic uh, show that kicked off with a nice little video with some narration from the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Mm. All right, P, we mentioned them. NWO member, of course. Um, kicked off with a nice tag team match between MSK, taking on Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher. Uh, yeah. I think we had predicted that Thatcher and Ciampa were going to win. I think Rob may have predicted MSK retaining. Um, so, MSK retained. Surprisingly, with the roll-up, uh, this was a solid match. I thought it was really well done. Um, MSK is... I mean, MSK is main roster ready, I think. I don't... I, I think they are. They've only been with the company, what, eight months, seven months? They're, they're you know... Part of me, when I watch MSK... Again, I haven't watched a whole lot of them. I'm going to be honest. But I don't know. Part of me feels like maybe the two, I don't know, too small is the word. They just look very mismatched, which, again, it could be the whole gimmick in itself. They're high flyers. Um, <clears throat> they're high flyers. I just don't, I mean, are they going to win the tag team title? Yeah, maybe once on Raw or SmackDown. Yeah, I get it. But, you know, I, I, I. Maybe I need to see something more, maybe another gimmick. I can't fully discount them because you never know. I probably would have thought the same thing about the Rockers back in the day and look how that ended up, at least for Shawn Michaels. But, you know, so I, I can't sit here and, and for too long, but I just, they're not doing anything for me so far. And again, maybe I just haven't watched enough. So I'm not saying that they're bad. You know, they're not bad in the ring. They're not bad performers. I just, eh. I thought that your Thatcher and Chopper were gonna win, especially maybe with uh, maybe they will. With uh, they got rolled up, so it could be something after. Um, Alistair Black now has a new well, Malachi Black um, now has an AW t shirt that he's gonna make me end up buying an AW t shirt. Uh, <laughs> it looks really nice. Um, anyways, uh, continuing on, we had the face off between uh, Johnny Gargano and NXT champion. Carrying Cross. Next week, we are officially getting, as this airs, it'll be, I guess, tomorrow. Uh, we are officially getting the NXT title defense of Carrying Cross and Gargano with special guest referee Samoa Joe. Why didn't they do this match on the Great American Bash? They were already had. They didn't need to do that. They already had a stack. I just thought that's what the whole buildup was. I thought this was supposed to be a short feud, lean up to the American Bash and be done with it. Yeah, they need to save some matches for NXT TV. They need to get some viewers in. I guess so. Um, is uh, what the bash itself was already kind of you know they already yeah, had no. that's true. That's true. Again, though, building up very nicely to some Samoa Joe cross action here. I think they signed Joe. I think Joe's gonna get in the ring again at I some think point. He might already be cleared. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I think this is a, I think this whole thing is a swerve. I there's no way they don't have that match. He's coming in as a special guest referee. Johnny tells him something about uh they're referring something about Candice LeRae and Cross uh, is ready to make a move and, and kind of attack Johnny and Samoa Joe stands in the way and blocks that encounter from happening. So it's getting another phase off between Cross and Joe. I think that's what this storyline is about. I think that's what this match is gonna be about. Curious to see how those two interact in the ring with each other. Um, I think Johnny Gargano will be a good worker in this match and just kind of keep things going. But um, Rob is Rob's asking if Joe is like the assistant GM. No, he's just the enforcer. I mean, he's just like the bodyguard for Regal. But I think, again, that's not going to last long. You don't bring Samoa Joe back after you released him to be the bodyguard of William Regal. I think he's getting back in the ring. I think they needed... And it would be a good story to tell other than him just saying, with Samoa Joe, you're back on NXT, get in the ring. I think there's good storytelling here. It makes it that much more meaningful when you need a guy, especially if there's a chance we see someone like Cross, maybe after SummerSlam, make the jump to Raw or SmackDown. Who better than Samoa Joe to get the job done and not cross out on his way up to the main card? Um, yeah, I mean... Tell me I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm not wrong. Do you hear, do you hear the, the vehicles passing by? No? All right. 
yeah, that's those are those are my bodyguards um, standing at your door, just in case you tell me that I'm wrong. Then they would just I could see, I could see spray a you with silly string and stuff. I could see a swerve where maybe Joe costs Gargano the match. Oh, I thought you were gonna say where Joe joins Cross. Um, I mean, you're you're absolutely right. I think Samoa Joe can totally um, take out Gargano to make sure the title stays on Cross. Because Joe wants to take it out across himself. Possibly. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. Any predictions on who's going to win? Cross, I guess. I Yeah, I mean, I guess Cross. I want to say. Yeah, I mean, is Cross going to lose the title? He was potentially. He's potentially going to Raw. He never won it, huh? Who? Cross, Cross is potentially going to Raw or SmackDown. Not until after it has to be after SummerSlam at this point, especially after SummerSlam. Mainly, that's when you're going to make a move like that after a big pay per view. But one is he going to lose to Johnny Gargano? Nothing against Johnny, but that's it's too short of a story for that to happen. If Joe gets involved, then you don't, but you don't, then what? I mean, no matter what, you have to have a match with Samoa Joe. You have to. There's no way you can't. You can't have that much tension based on no, no. Does it have to be for the title? It title. doesn't. Oh. It doesn't. But do you want this whole reign of, of Cross who had to be who took the title off? Well, I don't know if he took it off Keith Lee. Uh, that got the that was a whole different thing. Whatever. Um, someone has to beat Cross. Are we going to sit here and say Johnny Gargano is the one who beat Cross? If Samoa Joe gets involved, possibly. It has to be Samoa Joe. I don't know if he's clear. I'm, I want to say he he he's eventually. I will say he's eventually going to have to get. Involved. I no. I just don't know. If he's he yet. came back being clear. There's no way he wasn't. I don't There's know. no way he I'll wasn't. Believe when I see it. I'll Do we it. see a match with Joe this year? Just in general, is Joe going to be in a match this year? Yes or no? I hope so. Yes or no? I hope so. Is Samoa Joe going to be? in a wrestling match as a competitor on the other side of the ring from someone else, yes or no, in 2021? Nope. No? Yes, he is, <laughs> within the next few months. I promise. Right. Yes. You yes. can clip yes. it and I, do I whatever think, you yes. want. I think yes. So, <laughs> all right, moving on to the Million Dollar Mega Match. Say yeah, with now me. I'm all riled up. I didn't like this match. Say it with me, James. No. Come on. Come on. No. L- we were on the bandwagon for a week, but no, 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 no. Come L A nine. He should have been. He could be the new leader he's of the NWO. Cheat. No, cheat. he's a cheat. He could be the leader of the NWO because he's a cheat. How did he cheat, sir? He had the million dollar title laying outside on the apron. Drops the DDT outside on the million dollar belt. The referee didn't see it. Mm-mm. So then he didn't. Cam- cheat. The referee didn't see. He didn't get disqualified. I'm sorry. Did. So I will admit, he Ellie Knight did grab the title, yeah, and he then cheap. use it, but then it fell out of the ring. He did not place the title there when he hit the DDT. It just happened to be coincidence. Hit that DDT. It should be the timekeeper at all times. There's no way it should have been anywhere near that match other than at the timekeeper table. Hit that BFT, and now your buddy Cameron Grimes, your favorite wrestler. Is not his butler. He's gonna be Jeeves now. He gets to be Jeeves. He's gonna be a Virgil. Jeeves. He's gonna be the butler. Don't know. Don't insult Virgil like that, Vincent. And no, Jesus, no, Lord. You know what? Cameron Grimes is gonna get the best of this storyline, and it's gonna come out looking better because of it. Virgil uh, or not, I it's making him a little star for sure. I agree. Cameron Grimes is gonna carry LA Knight to whatever success he has going forward. Say it one more time. Come on. L. Cameron. All right, moving on. Um, <laughs> women's tag team title match between Io Shirai and Zoe Stark versus Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell, The Way. Uh, this was a bit of a shocker. Uh, apparently, this match only lasted eight minutes. Really? That's really, t- really short. Uh, solid match. This is a fun match. You got to figure out who. Uh, you know who who got recharged with that battery, that battery promo. Um, mm-hmm. Tegan Knox is back, and she costs Candice and Indy those titles. Unfortunately, 
Zoe and Io Shirai was not expecting this are the new NXT Women's Tag Team titles or champions. And uh, Dexter Loomis ended up picking up like Indy Hartwell uh, during the commercial break. So mm, I was wondering what happened there. Okay. I was wondering if that thing was still going on. Uh, speaking of Indy and Candice, uh, they were both wearing their in your house gear, which happened to be Razor Ramon and Xbox, of course. Once again, this is an all NWO episode right here. Uh, here's my here's Razor right there. Very nice. Yes. Very nice. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was the main event. What was, what was the main event? Was it Cross and the event? Of course, had to be. Well, first, before we get to that, we had the. North American Championship celebration where we got to see uh, Hit Row. They gave a huge performance. And yeah. the the CWC, Capital Wrestling Center, was being very disrespectful. They were just kidding. You know, like, they were sitting on their hands practically. Like, come on, I would have been rocking out. I would have been jamming out. Did you see Wade Barrett? He was I, jamming <laughs> out. Like, I would have been there. I did not that. see Wade Barrett, but I will have to go back and watch that moment. Uh, it, they didn't air it. I think it's on Twitter. Probably okay. go to his account. I think they might he might have posted it or something. On the bird app. All right. Um, yeah, I think he quote he quote tweeted it, so it's there. Um, but yeah, he was celebrating. And then um the main event, of course, Adam Cole Bay Bay, oh, yeah. Kyle in a stellar match, ten out of ten stars. Not surprisingly, our favorite wrestler, James, Adam Cole picked up the victory over Kyle. It's Kukai. not our favorite wrestler. I'm very you know, one of these days you're gonna chant. Adam they Cole. look too. They look. They look too much alike. We can get into the match, but I have a question for you. And I know you saw the tweet we're at on Adam Cole's Twitter account before the show with that photo. It, I, it, it looks kind of like a goodbye. I mean, he won the match, so I don't think it's a goodbye. But when I first saw it, I was like, "Hmm." Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts? Um, I think it shows how inspirational he is for the next generation, and that's it. I don't think. I mean, I'm off this show. I'm off. I'm done. I'm done. I'm Say it with me. Come on, Rob. I'm done. I'm done. Hey, night. Hey, we I'm got done. 30 seconds. Uh, we're officially wrapping up the show. Uh, that was a great show, everyone. Once again. Who's your favorite NWO member? Shawn Michaels. Great. Rob, go. Favorite NWO member? Rob, go. All right. And that's it for this week's episode of Beyond the Ropes. Get it in. <laughs> Scott Hall. All right. Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, and Scott Hall. What a trio. All right. Until next time, this episode, this gigantic 150 episode of Beyond the Ropes has been absolutely too sweet.